I'm Andrew Trendle. You're watching NME, and we're here with Dave and Tom from Gang of Youths. Hi, uh, hi, hi. Hi, Andrew. How are you going? Yeah, hi, not I'm... bad, guys. How are you? Really well, man. All the better for a beautiful day in London, sunny day. So yeah, no, here we are. We're about to launch your new single, Angel. It's a beautiful song, guys. I mean, I mean, what can you tell us about kind of um, the inspiration from this track and sort of how it started out and where it came from? Uh, it's about falling in love and finding a place in a new city with that person. Um, yeah, that's, uh, obviously it's my story, but we um, we kind of wanted it to feel like it was a bit more of a broad spectrum of love uh, and kind of a love letter to obviously very major cities that had, a, you know, a big part of my life and my wife's life. Um, so I think, yeah, it's about, uh, yeah, it's, this, I think there's something, there's always going to be poetry or fucking whatever in falling in love in a big city and like the, the metropolis, the idea that it's all kind of a, um, the metropolis is like a microcosm for a global human experience, no matter where. And uh, that sort of set the fucking background for it. Right? And uh, it's a very triumphant and euphoric kind of sound. I mean, where would you say that this track kind of takes things from um, Go Father in Lightness? This is the most important thing you'll ever hear about this song. It's the only thing that sounds like Go Father in Lightness. So we, we, the reason why I think we're releasing it first because we, we wrote it first. I mean, I've been working on the song for fucking four years. You know, you wouldn't be able to tell because it's um three and a half minutes of a replaceable indie rock song. But <laughs> we've been working on it for a while. And um, it's had quite a few um, iterations, this song. 15, 15 iterations. To be, to be precise, yeah, 15. So um, yeah. we had to get it right, obviously. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But uh, it's, yeah, it's as they just to echo what they said, it's, it's, it's a transition from, from, the sound that people are probably more familiar with the game used to something that explores a bit new, a new territory maybe. Or or we could be totally totally deluded about the new oh, sound. And yeah. it could just be <laughs> fucking identical and we're just we're not we're not so much Beck, we're more like you know, not Beck, who changes every album and is the fucking the chameleon. But it could just be completely generic yeah. bullshit and we've imagined um, you know, a, a genius muse moment with it, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but essentially and on paper would you say that this is kind of not representative of the rest of the upcoming record semi-representative i think i think it's a bridge what do you yeah mean? i think we're very like it was the obvious track to pick as as this first like outing back you know it's like it was yeah as just i'm just echoing what i said before but it's just, it takes boxes in that sense ultimately we hope it's a yeah hope people see what we're trying to try and do with the new stuff and it all becomes quite apparent what Angel was in that in that process, and like Angel aside, what can you tell us about kind of the uh, the character and kind of the mood of the new material and, and what you're trying to do? I think it's fair to say, like, because so I'm I'm a new addition to the band. I only joined a year and a half ago, but um, a few years back, these guys moved to London, and there was certainly like I think you guys have a sort of fascination with the UK, like music scene of old. Yeah. Definitely, like I don't know, just like. There are certain things, certain sounds that have like translated into music really well from just the location point of view. I think just yeah, actually that's a good point. I think we're trying to we're trying to zero in on the geography that we're surrounded with, and also I suppose it's probably like a fucking aspirational quality to where we're we're leaning towards within music, like where we want to be, what we want to sound like, what we want to what we want to represent or be emblematic of. Mm. You know, certain influences that have come through that we I think the three of us, well Tommy had. Um, joined um, influences that we all kind of shared um, before this, and not the ones that we share now. Does that make sense? Yeah, um, totally, totally. I think I think because I brought kind of new ideas and you know th things that I've always loved, but maybe felt a bit too fucking cowardly to do with the old band, or you know, I think because you know uh, our beloved guitar player um, went back to Australia, started a record label, and do his own own music and produce, and he's like. You know, he, he was such an important part of, of what that was that in order to fucking replicate it would be a disservice to people who enjoyed that shit. So I think we've had to kind of come in and I've had to, I've actually had to think for the first time in my career, mm. like, you know. It's also what just it's, growing older, like, everyone's, yeah, everyone's yeah. that many years older from the last record, yeah. so it's like. It was, it was so long going, like. Yeah. Yeah, it was, I think it's, it's, it's a sense of like, we've been together for 10 years. You know, but I've been making music and touring and shit since I was a fucking teenager. Like, well, so is Tommy. Mm. Tommy's been in dozens of bands. You know, he was in a he was in a band that did really well um, ten years ago. And I think for us, it's sort of like reinventing how we work in this fucking occupation in this mm. space or whatever. Um, so yeah, so finding so finding new songs, 
to express that with has been kind of tricky for me because uh, I've scrapped kind of two iterations, iterations, they pronounce it right, iterations, you know, two iterations of this record before we sort of stumbled upon this one. Mm. Um, there's, and there's obviously a lot, lot more, a lot more orchestration. You know, Tom being classically trained means I don't have to sit in front of a fucking computer like, what, like what, what's a minimum? You know, shit like that. <laughs> um, yeah, and I think like you know, there's a lot more of that kind of minimalist. Steve Reich, Phil Glass, Lamont Young, fucking Riley, John Adams. You know, people like that. Um, I think that's kind of come out in the music more because we're less reliant on the guitar as a as a medium i think maybe a lot of the electronic thing that a lot of bands who think they're awesome try to do later on in their fucking career um so having a fucking big old at that um <laughs> so there's no real defined role musically in the band anymore i think because like tom tom and donnie I, i'm gonna be honest like, i'm the only person in the band who's not that good at any one instrument no hon honestly god like, i just <laughs> But I think because we're all, we're all kind of multi-instrumentalists, we sort of had to fucking shift and change around. And there's obviously shit that I can't play um, that junk again, you know? So there's a, there's so much of that. I think that there's a spirit of like collaboration and of anarchy, I guess, um, you know, that we don't have these set positions anymore. So I think it just gives us space to fuck around. Um, whether or not that's good or not, I fucking know, dude. You know, but like, mm. you know, it's, 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 been, it's been pretty rewarding because like, you know, we've obviously had nothing to do for fuck all 18 months. So, <clears throat> so just for the record, that band you were in before, Tom, was of course Noah in the Whale. Yeah, I was with Noah. Yeah, Noah from day Who one. Who was the hot one? <laughs> yeah. uh, all those moons ago. And uh, there was a Tumblr dedicated to him. <laughs> Less of that, the better. That one. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's actually my worst fucking nightmare. Having that, you know, you've lived through my I've worst nightmare. Yeah. I've yeah. survived. I've survived. <laughs> His true claim to fame is that he toured with Mumford and Sons for years, and then we nicked him. Well, that, yeah, so that's how we met. So I actually, after Noah ended in whatever year, 2015, I think, I went on the road with the Mumford lot uh, playing violin. And um, these guys supported in 2019 on a European tour and a US tour. Yeah. And uh, I helped shit, basically. Mutiny on the Bounty. Our old guitar player told me to hire him when I thought that Chachi was still going to be in the band. And he's like, oh, by the way. <laughs> so he actually, that Tom was top Chachi's kind of like party gift, which is <laughs> like the nicest thing ever. Yeah, but. That's sort of how it worked. Never made a gift before. You are a gift. <laughs> it's wow. a gift. Oh my gosh. So the rest of Gang of Youth were kind of very much acclimatized to London and kind of probably drowned in British cynicism by the time you you you, you like you took the I, I, I like mate, I like how you reckon that British people are more cynical than Australians. <laughs> like Australians are so fucking cynical we won't even tell you that we think you shit. <laughs> There's these British people have the goddamn fucking common courtesy to let you know. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> that's the that's the difference. Yeah. Other than those English um, influences kind of creeping in, would you say that kind of being in London for these four years has kind of changed the shape and the character of the band in any other ways? I mean, we had to live our lives, you know. Like I, I, I say this all the time, and it probably it probably just sounds fucking really self-loathing and well as me, but I've never really properly accustomed. I've never probably become accustomed to the life of being someone who's marginally in the in the public space, I guess. So for me, coming to London was like, fuck that now. And being here with my wife and building some semblance of a life. And I think when you talk about London shaping the character of all the bands we come, shaping us as human beings that has, you know, um, Maxie got married. I got married to my wife, I met her in New York, and then we moved here, I got married. Um, Donnie got married, and Maxie's had a kid, like my dad died. Um, all, the, all the space of four years, we lived together for three of them. Um, so yeah, I think it's fair to say that just life happened to all of us and that shaped it and all of this life has been reflected in, you know, it's been a reflection of the city that we're in, you know, mm. like all the, all the unique fucking experiences and whatever that we've had in the past four years, we could have had in any city, any city really, but it's just London's been a stage for it. And London's been a stage for it. Yeah. And it's sort of like, I think that kind of goes back to the universality. I feel like I'm pronouncing all these fucking words wrong. No. The, uni the universality of like that's a good word yeah, yeah. <laughs> all, the, all the all the basically all the shit i'm trying to try and communicate in that song and it's hand-fisted three chord way is like love in a new city um and i think that's that's kind of the the essence of what we've experienced and so maybe angel of eighth avenue is a reflection of that um or a diatribe about it i don't know if it's a reflection of a diatribe <laughs> 
And um, you guys have got a pretty sweet spot at All Points East, right? I mean, how are you guys feeling about returning to the stage? Really excited. Like, I'm, it's an amazing spot. Hats off to our booking agent. Um, <laughs> but it's, it's for me, it's great, great to like, yeah, be on the bill with all those those bands that I'm familiar with, you know, down the years. And it's pretty cool. I told my wife that we we're playing with Caribou, and like, we're both pretty pumped because I think she likes them too. So yeah, that's cool. But you, you know, these, these are fucking people that when I was a little kid. Australia, yeah, right. they, yeah, yeah. They come over for a festival. I don't have any money to go to, you know. And then now you get to play with them, which is all right. How do you how do you think about them um, road testing these new songs then? Really excited. I am really excited. It's I'm excited. Big, there's no way I, I can't <laughs> I imagine anyway. not like not getting a reaction. <laughs> I'm excited. This fucking guy. <laughs> You're excited. Yeah, I'm excited. I'm just nervous as shit. I know, but... yeah. Oh, we're all nervous. It's all panicked. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like the claustrophobia of having to fucking recreate what we've done in here, 300 tracks worth of information, this maximalist, tasteless, without restraint thing mm. that we've done. How do we do that on stage? Badly. Yeah. Future Dave has to worry about that. Yeah. <laughs> future Dave, people are stressed. <laughs> future Dave's got a lot on his plate. Yeah. It's future Dave, yeah. He needs pyro and fingerless gloves. Pyro, yeah, right, right. Yeah. No, maybe, you know. <laughs> Honestly, we had Pyro once. Andrew, we had Pyro once or twice. And then once it was like, we, we was playing um, the NRL Grand Final. Like, you know, me and uh, Chotch and uh, Max are big, you know, rugby league fans. And Donnie as well. Um, so we played the Grand Final Australia, which was was for me the signal that we got to whatever we were. It's like it's basically like the Super Bowl halftime show. And there was fucking big old fucking flames. And for a second there, I literally felt like I was Fenris from Dark Throne or something. Like it was the coolest. <laughs> you know, I, no, I li- legit, mate, I felt like I was like a bath or something. Like I felt like a black metal fucking like gal or something, like fucking flames and whatever billowing up and you know, all these Pacific Islander people were watching me do this. And for a minute there it felt like it, it felt like, all right. This is the pinnacle. I can, I can, I can retire. <laughs> so when you say pyro, give me more pyro, brother. <laughs> Let's test the budget of all points east. Let's do it. Yeah, right. <laughs> Wait, we get a budget at all points. <laughs> <laughs> nice one, sweet. Well, guys, that's everything. Getting viewed. Thanks, Thanks so much for your time, guys. Hey, really, hey, really, really nice to meet you, mate. <laughs>